أولاً مرسي دكتورة زهرة لحضرتك وتشريف حضرتك لهذا اللقاء العلمي اللي تحت مظلة قسم الأطفال كلية الطب الأصل عيني شكراً للمشاركة مع الزملاء الأعزاء شكرا نسل هيلث ساينس على رعايتها لهذا الويبينار شكرا لسي سي جي على الاورجنايزيشن وانا هبتدي باذن الله اتكلم عن الاوفرلوكد او انكومن كوزز اوف فيلير تو ثرايف الاوبجيكتيف از تو الستريت ذا واي اوف مانجمنت اوف انكومن and overlooked uh, causes of failure to thrive through discussion of few key studies. Oh, by the way, I hope if you have a lot of chatting, I hope that he will answer me or answer the questions that we will ask about cases. I will start with you first case. A male child presented to us at the age of six years with his parents who claim that their child is not growing well as his peers. هم ملاحظين انه ابنهم مش بيكبر بنفس الصوره الكافيه او الملائمه اللي شايفينها في زملائه او يعني اولاد العيله. In history, the mother mentioned that early in infancy he had attacks of diarrhea and vomiting, which was attributed to cow's milk allergy, for which he shifted from breastfeeding to amino acid-based formula. That can early in infancy. Time. An important question to start with, is there cow's milk allergy from breastfeeding, yes or no? What do you think? I will tell you, the uh, uh, the most probable answer for this and the most important no in very rare cases small amounts of food allergens that pass from the mother's diet into breast milk may induce an allergic reaction in a fully breastfed infant so sometimes there is a small amounts of food allerg allergens come from the mother's diet to breast milk. However, لازم نحط في بالنا هذه القاعدة. This is not an allergy against breast milk. يعني إحنا بنشوف كتير assuming على إنه بيحصل هذا إنه نبص نلاقي stoppage of breast milk with starting amino acid based food. It can often be successfully managed by excluding, just excluding, the causative food from the maternal diet. So, the rule, don't stop breast milk, assuming that this is the cause of symptoms suggestive of allergy. Like what? Number one, cry, aggressive cry, colics. Sometimes mucus in stools with loose stool. Don't stop breast milk on this. And continue breastfeeding. And if there is a specific allergen, uh, which is uh, assumed to be the cause of uh, this uh, symptoms, let the mother to avoid it in her diet. Let us go back to our patient. The mother mentioned that partial improvement of symptoms occurred after the intake of amino acid-based formula. There is partial improvement of the symptoms. His appetite is not bad, and this is very important to ask. It, does he have the desire to eat or not? His appetite is good but he's not eating enough. He's eating small amounts. Asking about other symptoms, she mentioned that he suffered from recurrent attacks of chest infection. Throughout these years, 
his mother was not satisfied about his growth, but has been reassured by the family doctor that this is attributed to his cow's milk allergy. The child received several courses of multivitals. Let us think together what is there. When we examine him, we found that both the weight and the height are low. When we assessed his anthropometric measures, both weight and height are low. So what do you think? Let me tell you principle for assessment of faltering of growth. If the weight is only affected, so most probably it is nutritional faltering of growth. But if the weight and the height are both affected, think of chronic illness or think of endocrine causes of failure to thrive. At last, both weight and height, in addition to the skull circumference, are all below normal. This could be due to neurological or genetic or metabolic cause. So we have in our child, weight and height, both are affected due to chronic illness or endocrine causes we don't know. This child eats small amounts of food without anorexia. He has failure to thrive. In addition to recurrent respiratory tract infections. Clinically, no peculiar features. Mentally is okay. Heart sounds are normal. No audible murmurs. Chest is free. No organomegaly. Neurologically as well, he's free. Laboratory investigation showed normal complete blood count, normal liver, renal function tests, serum chloride is 102. Serum iron, calcium are normal, but low serum ferritin. Urine analysis is free. Stool analysis showed fat globules. Calprotectin level is 251. Occult blood in stools is negative. Vitamin D level is sufficient. What do you think? A child with failure to thrive. Plus, history of attacks of diarrhea, nausea, and sometimes vomiting. History of recurrent attacks of test infections. Serum chloride is a little bit low. Fat globules are positive in stools. Can someone tell me what could be, what you put in your mind about the diagnosis, which can differential diagnosis of this? Yes. Okay, good. He has to go away. Type. Come in, come in. Okay, tell us. He has had a great gamina again. Okay. Your initial diagnosis could be a case of cystic fibrosis. This is the initial diagnosis. Okay. We proceeded to more evaluation. Sweat chloride test is 61. It is high, but it is a little bit high. The normal considerable is at 60. The genetic analysis for mutations, we did genetic analysis for mutations for cystic fibrosis the patient is negative for the tested mutations. لازم لما نيجي نتعامل مع حالة failure to thrive نشتغل كتيم. This is his chest x-ray. 
I refer this child to pediatric pulmonologist. And she asked for CT chest. And she was about to give carrion, pancreatic enzymes, by the way. She asked for CT chest to assess the chest uh, condition. Guess what is the report of his CT chest? The report is suspected mediastinal vascular anomaly, otherwise the rest of CT chest is normal. This is his CT chest. Again, we ask it the mother. You mentioned your child is eating small amounts. Why? She mentioned he's sometimes not able to swallow properly and stopped eating after which he may vomit. He sometimes feel pain with the swallowing as if food stuck in the esophagus. This is very important. Ibnik mabiyakolsh, mabiyakolsh li. I will, I never forget her words. Who is yekul? بس كل ما يعوز ياكل يبقى وهو بيبلع يحس ان حاجة وقفت في صدره فيشرب مية او يرجع So we refer to vascular radiologist and she did multi-slice CT and the multi-slice CT showed that there is right-sided aortic arch with apparent subclavian artery indenting the esophagus and trachea. Okay, let us explain. What is the cause of his recurrent chest infections? It is due to repeated aspiration. What about the fat globules in the stools? By the way, you should know that are, there are many causes of fat globules in the stools. Diseases affecting the intestine, like infections, any infection can do so. Celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, pancreatic insufficiency, like chronic pancreatitis cystic fibrosis, and gallbladder disease and conditions of the bile duct. So it is not only cystic fibrosis. What about his low chloride level? Fluid loss is a cause. These, all these are list of uh, low chloride level. Look at, it, at this. Fluid loss due to injuries, burns, eating disorders like bulimia. Acute severe malnutrition can do so. Dietary insufficiency, cystic fibrosis. Look at this. Drinking too much water. This child swallow with a lot of water. Congestive heart failure, Parter syndrome, salt wasting, nephropathy, malabsorption syndrome. And you should know very important. When you find a, a for an example, a result of a lab tell you that there is a low chloride level or there's fat globules kindly reassess again. Some don't take just one result as a guarantee. This is the normal aortic arch. And here, look, the right-sided aortic arch with the left sub subclavian artery causing fostering, making indentation on the uh, esophagus and trachea both. And the time to right-sided aortic arch with apparent left subclavian artery accounts around 40% of all right-sided arches, in which the left to common carotid artery arises first, then the right common carotid, then the right subclavian, and finally the left subclavian. Rarely produces symptoms and usually incidentally discovered. Rarely, this is a rare case in which 
there is esophageal compression and tracheal compression, but the mainly is esophageal compression, causing this child not able to swallow very well. The patient, by the way, referred to the vascular surgeon. He was abort, uh, operated upon around a few days ago, and he is now okay. And the surgery, and I contact the vascular surgeon, and he told me it, it should be done because there is marked indentation compression of the esophagus. Let us move to the second case. A male child, three years old, presented with failure to thrive. Both weight and height are below normal. So this is not something good because both are low. Mother is complaining of painful swallowing. This is very important, painful swallowing. Causes of dysphagia either comes from the oral cavity stomatitis, pharyngitis, epiglottitis, or going back to esophagitis, dystonic trauma, or rheumatological causes. Sometimes if there's salivary gland inflammation can do problem in swallowing. Okay, the dietary history, mother offers him all types of food and he has good appetite. However, swallowing is pain. Examination revealed oral monilesis. So this child has failure to thrive and his appetite is good. He wants to eat, but there is a painful swallowing and there is oral monilesis. Is it so? She told me, no, this painful swallowing lasts a long time around uh, uh, a few weeks to one month. I put a plan of management. I, I asked it for full labs and pharyngoscopy. And I started oral treatment of monilesis, treatment of oral monilesis, started full caloric requirement through high caloric formula plus good amount of food. The food, I asked the mother to make it puree by planter for better swallowing and then asked her to come with the result of the flexible pharyngeal, laryngeal esophag esophagoscopy, and which revealed that there is severe, look, all this, severe oral, pharyngeal, and even laryngeal. This is the larynx, by the way, candidiasis. And the... Um, Doctor asked, the ENT doctor asked me to do immunological setup, asked to for doing immunological setup or think about diabetes. The CBC showed microcytosis and hypochromia. Immunoglobulins are good. Granulocytic function is normal. However, the cluster of differentiation showed CD4 lymphopenia, which can cause opportunistic infections, which could be very, very painful, uh, 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 very annoying. And this one of it is the candidiasis, which means the painful swallowing. The follow-up of our patient, he remained on antifungal treatment for one month, a nutrient dense formula and food puree. His weight increased one kilogram at this month. His swallowing improved markedly. The follow up flexible pharyngoscopy told complete resolution of monilases. In addition, he was referred for follow up at the immunology clinic. Third case. Three months old male presented with failure to thrive. His weight is three and a half kilogram. His length is 51 centimeters. 
Mother mentioned that at the age of one and a half months, his suckling power is affected and he used to sleep a lot and cannot be awakened easily. This is very important. They tried for me, but still he had poor suckling with sleeping more than six to seven hours. Mother was worried and went to hospital casualty. Blood glucose was measured. It was 30 milligram. He has hypoglycemia, which is severe. He has been resuscitated at that hospital with fluids. Within two days, his hypoglycemia improved. He can have poor intake of both formula. According to outreach, he followed an attack of hypoglycemia and respiratory distress for which he was referred to Aborish. On admission, he had poor suckling. He was dehydrated. There is hypoglycemia and acidos. What do you think? What do you think uh, that this is the clinical picture of what? Yes. Okay, the first thing to think about it, it is, it could be a case of an inborn error of metabolic. This child will need to thrive, metabolic acidosis, hypoglycemia, poor suckling, sepsis-like. It is a good thinking. The causes of neonatal hypoglycemia are a lot. Hepatic enzyme deficiencies is a cause. Mitochondrial fatty oxidation, acid oxidation, is an important cause. Endocrine disorders are important causes. Lack of substrate, either he not growing well, like those with trying growth retardation or small portional Asia, or the medical conditions like sepsis, anaphylaxis, Access post exchange trauma or pulmonary disease. They thought about it could be endocrine causes. They did all the endocrine workup and it excluded that there's an endocrine cause for hypoglycemia. They started to go through imports of basic slab, plasma lactate, blood ammonia are normal, tandem mass is normal, skin functions are normal, liver enzymes at admission, it was elevated, thrombin time is prolonged, albumin is low, not that low, but it is a little bit low. Reducing substance in urine in post is positive. What do you think? Happy that there are people who are interacting, by the way. What is the suggested diagnosis? You think that there is a hepatic problem, which could be, for an example, galactosemia. However, during the workup, urine analysis revealed that there is 40 to 60 pus cells, and the urine culture showed more than 100 colony count and it was clepsial. Arthrosonography, uh, sonography, liver size, and ecogenicity, as well as the kidneys, all are normal. The management plan, first stabilization. Second, antibiotics for this uh, UTI infection, according to culture and sensitivity. Start nasogastric feeding with proper amount according to caloric requirements. The full amount start with the full amount from day one. Gradually increase the amount 
to avoid any problems in the electrolytes, in the calcium, in the magnesium, and so on. What do you think? This is a case of neonatal sepsis. Is neonatal sepsis a cause of poor suckling? Of course. Neonatal hypoglycemia, yes. Cause metabolic acidosis, yes. This cold tract infection, which is severe. And in a main child, put 100 question mark. What is the etiology of his UTI infection? Should be thoroughly investigated. There is an important center that neonates and infants up to the age of two months who have bilunifrites, usually don't have symptoms, localized to ur urinary tract. It is discovered as a part of evaluation of neonatal sex. They may display the following symptoms, jaundice, fever, failure to thrive, poor feeding, vomiting, irritability. Susceptibility to urinary tract infection in infants may is uh, increased by alteration of the periurethral flora by any antibiotic therapy, anatomic anomaly, which should be searched in this child, in this infant, bowel or bladder dysfunction constipation. The patient blood glucose is normalized, stabilized. He achieved the full amount needed to catch up growth. Last urine analysis after the antibiotics free, two weeks of antibiotics is free. He tolerates the full caloric requirements. His weight increased five grams in three weeks. His suckling power marked improved, for which the nasogastric tube has been removed. He discharged for amount of formula which helped achievement of catch-up growth. Let us say, what about his liver functions? The transaminases with the improvement goes back to normal and his albumin raised up. Prothrombin time has been corrected just after one intake of uh, uh, vitamin K because this child was not suckling. He, the mother told us, إنه هو كان بيقعد قاعد مرة 13 ساعة ما ياكلش وده اللي احنا قلنا له عليه ازاي طفل يقعد 13 ساعة ما ياكلش في سن النيونيتال بيريد أول ثلاث شهور دي بتعتبر نيونيتال بيريد. This is very serious. The fourth case and the final case. A nine months old infant presented with proportionate failure to thrive. Weight, length, surface, all are below normal. He has recurrent chest infections. Clinically, there is widespread crepitations and wheezes. He has scaly skin and skull. Look, all this extensive with infection all over and scaly skin. It's complete blood count, total leukocytic count, persistently low, range it from 2.1 to 2.9. He has absolute lymphopenia. What else to do? Communicate with the immunology consultant. She asked me to do differential cluster of, uh, cluster of differentiation, low CD3 and CD4 in addition Immunoglobulin G is low. This could be, and this is most probably a case of severe combined immune deficiency. It is not just simple failure to thrive. We should look for what is going on. The management of failure to thrive is to give nutritional requirements and to do catch-up growth by calculating the calories required for age multiplied by the ideal weight over the actual weight. This will give you the catch-up 
the calories needed for catch-up growth. But please don't start with the whole caloric requirements at once. Start it gradually for better tolerance to avoid that there is any electrolyte or any calcium, magnesium problems or uh, uh, affection. The rules that the child's diet must be fortified by caloric density, by using concentrated formula or adding glucose polymers or extra lipids. Toddlers should be offered solid food before liquids to and avoid excessive juice or milk consumption. Milk is not always the rule to give. Sometimes the umad bits tassir kida na tadi laban yidghazab ay haga la offer solids. Take care that the catch up height will lag several months behind the catch up weight. This is very important. Take home message from my presentation. Failure is to thrive is not as simple as we may think. Beyond such terminology, many overlooked causes may be present. As a clinical nutritionist, you should search for such causes. For why? For proper management. And good referral to the specialist who can take care and continue the journey with management with you. Clinical nutritionists should work as a team with other specialists for the proper management of cases of the failure to thrive. Thank you very much.